as Scar talked about when he was on uh, the podcast, like that's how you can gauge as a creator, like how how well your content's hitting an audience yeah. is how much fan art's generated. And I haven't seen as much fan art generated from anything else than the life series. Yeah, this this yeah. this series, the life series, hits a chord with the audience, and and quite frankly, you know, Green's vision. It's it's a lot of fun watching Green's vision come to fruition in fantastic ways that I have to imagine he didn't even see coming. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. So our last podcast was with Good Times with Scar. Mm -hmm. It was great. And it was a good time with Scar. It was a good time with Scar. <laughs> it was a good time with Scar. It was, we, had, uh, we had a lot of fun. And during that podcast, we touched a little bit on the Life Series. Mm -hmm. right? we, didn't, we didn't really dive into it. We just kind of talked about it a little We've bit. We've touched on the Life Series a few times, right, on this podcast. Yes. Not only with Scar, but with the... Uh, collaborative content yep. creation bit that we yeah and then it's just our favorite thing so we end up talking about it a lot of we do we talk about a lot but we also both realize there's so many things to talk about when it comes to the life series and we never really dove in so that's what yeah. we're doing today let's we're really gonna all just, right i'm excited because that's we're gonna fun. peel back everything and just and go right so let's do we need to preface all, this like for the people that have no clue that's what right, the life that's series what is say. okay yeah. I, I think we should because yeah i'm sure we have some viewers and listeners that are like life series I, what, what are you, you talking you guys about? play minecraft what i i found a, you guys out just from the podcast circuit you know and we haven't even said the word minecraft yet so. that's true i did i just said it <laughs> minecraft yeah so you want you take us through it you bring us so it. yeah it's uh it's a series it's a minecraft series where basically minecraft we basically use minecraft as a backdrop or a stage to produce content and in this case it's it's improv style content um but there are some things there's game mechanics that come into play you know in in video games you can respawn and so uh we leverage this this was actually green our buddy green mm -hmm. his brainchild. uh it, we started season one as a quote-unquote experiment yeah. um, because we had no idea if this was gonna have legs um so uh the concept was with the first one was third life meaning we had three lives to live and at the end of that if you die a third time you're out of the series right um and then basically it was represented by colors too which was a nice nice thing because you could come up to somebody and say see their name above their head and they would be like yellow and you're like oh you got two lives you know right. what i mean so we knew that and uh basically the concept was it was kind of like a the social experiment the social dynamic where you know how are you going to make it to the end how are you going to be the last person standing and that's what it, deemed it, like it was the survivor. winner it's survivor yeah, in it's minecraft. survivor yeah. in minecraft that's a great good way yeah, to put it yeah it. and it was interesting because you're right it was color-coded we all started green. Everybody has three lives. You die once, you're down to two mm -hmm. lives. You die again, you're down to one life. But there's also like a hostility tier there as well. When you're yeah. green, you can't attack anybody. You can defend yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah, yellow, you can attack up to green. Uh, and red, you can attack whoever you want, right? So this let's, let's, let's talk a little bit just about those dynamics. And then let's dive into that first series. Because I'm excited to, to, to... I'm excited about this topic because I went back to watch my first... <laughs> my first episode uh -huh. and I was which like, was what Why? like two years ago now um, how long ago was it maybe it was almost eh, i don't know maybe almost two huh. years ago i don't feels know. like about yeah yeah so okay so actually let me ask you this do you want to dive into the first one or do you want to cover what all four were and then go back let's you know let's go chronological order okay J just one at a time because there has been four like you said we've done four iterations of the life series each time it changes a little bit, like the rules uh, and how it's played out. And then also the name yeah. change. Uh, so I went back and was watching like my first episodes from each season. And, and like every season, I'm like calling it the wrong name <laughs> because we had just <laughs> yeah. changed the name. We were probably told the name of the series like 10 seconds before we hit record. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like, okay, what is this? So funny. It was <laughs> so funny. Well, we, and all right. So we, all right. So we had third life and it's good to just focus on, what it was so everybody understands we explained the tiers of it now mm -hmm. let's talk about the dynamic of what it was to actually record it and uh let me go first okay so i don't get nervous i just it's not a thing i do but i got nervous Lucky you. i got i got i got nervous on this that season a little bit i was obviously honored to be there i was the smallest dude there and i was basically in in channel size not channel stature size. No, definitely not stature that's <laughs> that's true uh, so the smallest guy there, um, in, in channel size, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the smallest amount of influence, if you will. 
And I was surrounded by a bunch of really big YouTubers, and then there was a handful of absolute Goliaths, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Green being one of them, over 7 million subscribers. Joel, who's known as Smallish Beans, over 3.5 million or something. Scar's mm -hmm. over 2 million. Like, there's some Goliaths in there. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't, I don't, I'm so excited to be here, but I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't understand the dynamic. All these people have working relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. I got to find my space and I don't know what I'm going to do. And I ended up playing Minecraft, which was the wrong thing to do. Like I, I literally went in there, let me get some resources, let me get organized. And that's okay. But it got to a point to where you and Tango, you got, I, I didn't see either one of you in the first entire episode. Like, that's crazy. That's a right. three hour recording stint. I, yeah, actually, I remember that. Like at the end of that first session, Tango, was, Tango and I look at each other, we're like, where's Skiz been this yeah. whole time? What is happening here? <laughs> that was nuts, man. <laughs> and I didn't know, like, I, I was just, you know, I was one of those things where I was aware that I was finding my, my legs. I was aware I was finding my rhythm. I just didn't know what the end state picture would look like. And then you fast forward to season four, which we'll get to later. And the skiz arc in all those seasons is, is tangible. You can, hmm. you can see the, the adjustment. Now I really want to go back and watch your first episode. Oh, it's <laughs> awful. Like, well, and so, and not only the character arc, but also the, there's an arc in my editing. My, I might completely change my style. I like my style of editing now much more than I do then, right? Mm. So there's a so as an example, right? I, I set up this place. I'm looking for a place to stay, and I wanted to make Schizo Man Point, and it was actually the center of the map. So all the fan art that came out, it, it was it almost became like a meeting ground for anybody because it was a big plateau that I made, and it was neat. And I'm sitting there making my 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 space, and I hear a voice, and it's Ren. And this was not my introdu my introduction to Ren, but it was legitimately like the first time I'm working with Ren, and it was neat. And he was di <laughs> he was digging up from the the depths, and he just happened to dig like pretty much right into my house, which was neat. <laughs> and um, he comes up, and then we 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 traded some stuff, and the uh, the dichotomy in regards to him as an established content creator, uh, when compared to who I was at that moment, was you could see it. It was bad, and he was carrying us. Hmm. You know what I mean? He was doing such a great job, and I was the I was the anchor. And I remember after that interaction in my head, I'm like, you better step it up and you better do it fast because that was really boring. Like I was, I was upset with myself and mm -hmm. I was like, you got to be better than that. As I'm watching this video just yesterday, I, I, I'm watching this and I'm like, why did I allow there to be three full seconds of dead hair? Like, why didn't I cut that out? Like it was oh, wow. so embarrassing. Now, granted, I didn't watch the whole episode and I didn't finish them. I'm sure I improved a lot throughout that, that series or whatever. But I remember trying to find a way to fit in. I remember trying to find what's my niche going to be. And I decided my niche is going to be, I'm going to be very, very loyal and very honest. That's going to be my thing. That's I'm going to yeah. carry that with me. And uh, as the season went on, Martin and Ren had, you know, they had dog warts and it was a great castle that they had built and they had this tight, tighten it and i'm like i'm just gonna find a way to get into their mix and kind of complete the like a trio here if i could so how can i do that and i was like i'm gonna offer them an escape path if they're ever in trouble so i dug an underground you know thing a, a secret thing to their base and showed them how to get to it and it was a hit and i remember the episode we don't is if anybody doesn't know we do not script these and yeah. so I remember. Now there's a meme out there that we do, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. We don't. Yeah, we thinks, don't. Yeah. I, I mean, we would be the most talented writers I in know. Hollywood. Oh my gosh. If if we actually scripted any of these <laughs> no. life series, because the things that happen it's along the way is it's just crazy. insane, and yeah. nobody nobody's brilliant enough to come up with the stuff that yeah. goes down. It just happens. <laughs> and I remember getting going and mixing it up with uh, uh, Ren and Martin at one point, and I'm I'm at the I'm at the we're at a point now. It's like episode four or five or something. And, uh, and they had a, a talk. I didn't even know about it. And they said, we basically, long story short, we want you to be one of us. And I'm like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, let's do it. And, and Ren was playing the, he was the red King. And he says, yeah. and he says, he says, Martin. And he says, go, go fetch the banner. And Martin goes, yes, my Lord. It just like runs away. Like they were so in character. Ren was like, funny. Oh. Cause like, I remember he was putting on this, like, I don't know what he was trying to be like, like like Braveheart yes, era, yes. but he was doing it in like this pirate voice the entire time. <laughs> yes. So it was like this weird mix of genres. <laughs> it really was. It, it made was no so sense, good. but it was great. Yar! Yeah, I know. Yar! Like it was, it was, 
<laughs> Come to me, Castle yeah, Meaty. Yeah, like, I got, yeah. And it worked. It like it, it worked in the in the. It was. Uh, it had such odd charm to it, you know. And that's the thing about Ren. Ren is he really. Um, he leans heavily into the character that yeah, he's going I mean, for, yeah. and you have to admire that because yeah. for some people that's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know. And even Martin, you know, yes, my lord, and went off, and I'm like, okay, that's awesome. And in that moment, I I I kind of made this weird decision to not go into care in that type of character because it would have been too jarring for the audience. I wasn't that character for four episodes. I can't just switch. Yeah. You know what I mean? It kind of bummed me out that I didn't think about it earlier, but whatever. And so we created this tight knit group and there was more than just the three of us by the end of it. But I remember thinking this show is working. It's working right now because I am very protective of all the people in who are part of the, of, of dog wards. I, I want us to come out on top. I want to see what I can do. Yeah. I want to support, I want to support my King. And I remember we called him King in front of Cleo and she's all, Oh God. <laughs> so <laughs> Just funny. Disgusted by it. And she even uh, said it like she told on us, she's like, they're calling him King. Yeah. It was so funny, man. But I remember dude, I, I died in the very first episode and that was a very big deal. And that's, and we'll you talk died after everyone had logged off pretty there was much seconds left in recording yeah. seconds like you're right it was like okay we're wrapping it up go ahead and do your outros and then i died so the next the, by the next week we started and there was two yellows me and scar and people are like what happened to skiz mm -hmm. because because scar like fell down this big old thing i died too shocking that wasn't Enderman. the the creeper that green like let Scar died to a creeper. Oh, and I then think you're right. Brian owed Scar his life yes. for the rest of the season or something. No, like that's that. right because his that second was death season, was right? when he when he fell to his death. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm pretty that was sure. crazy because the stakes were really high. I mean, think about. It. I mean, fast forward into the last series that we did, the limited life one. Like there was a lot of deaths yeah. in, in the early days. We only had three, and that was it. You're that's out. It. Like you could have died three times in the first episode, and, and you had a done. one episode season. Yes, that was that was scary. Like that actually put like. So many, like, that made me sweat. Like, the entire yep. time, I was just playing nervous, Yeah, you know? So when I died to an Enderman, you can imagine what that did to my ego. It was the worst. And it was one of those things where if you look at my POV of it, like, it's I'm just going through the desert with Etho and Ren, and I just come up over the hill, and there's just an Enderman right there waiting for me, my crosshairs. As usual. And I watched how I defended myself, air quotes, and I'm like, yeah, this is really, really embarrassing because I just do not handle Enderman well. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I know for a fact I would have been fine now. Why did I panic so much? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, 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 it took me forever to put the boat down so the Enderman would pop into it and he just walked around it. That was great. But I was like so unprepared. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and now I'm just like, I freaked out. It would have <laughs> been like, this would not have been a big deal, but whatever. So I was very, I remember being done with that recording and it was basically like the worst thing that could have happened because I lost a third of my life mm -hmm. and... Nobody was there to see it. Like right. it was like the, the worst. Yeah, of the like, worst. like it wasn't when you die and that death method message shows up in other people's videos, then the viewers see that and they're like, oh, how did Skizzle Man die? I'm gonna yeah. go check out his his POV, his point of view. Right. And then, you know, you can get a couple extra views from that, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. You know, but you didn't even have that. Like everybody just <laughs> everybody came back, like, why is Skizzle Man <laughs> yellow? What cause? <laughs> what did he miss? Yeah. It was the worst. And I was just like, okay. And and what's funny is Yellows can attack up to greens, but there wasn't a whole lot of incentive to. You don't get mm -hmm. anything. Right. You don't get anything. You know, and that and so that's but that's that that series that first um, season was fantastic, and it and it came with it came with a lot of stress, like you're saying, because it was like you have three lives and that's it. That's it. You yeah. have to make you got to work to get as many episodes out of this as possible, while also not making boring content. Yeah. So it's different when everybody's walking on eggshells the whole time. So, yeah. which is why the blood show at the end is so <laughs> exciting. You know? When I, when I went into the series, I think I was gaming it. Like I was trying to be a gamer, you know, like I, I was like, okay, all right. The idea is to be the last man standing and you know me, I'm competitive and I want to win everything. And so I was like, how can I do that? Well, I'm going to gear myself up the, the best way I know how. Villager trading and and using like game mechanics to easily find diamonds and and I was and I was doing it all. Like I started breeding villagers right away and getting a trading hall going. I tried to keep it keep it hidden from my enemies, you know. I knew mm -hmm. alliances were gonna form and I was gaming it. Like I was literally gaming it. I was farming everything, I was getting the best gear I possibly could. And then I think after like an episode and a half or so, I realized. I don't think this is going to be the most entertaining. Like <laughs> just playing Minecraft. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just showing like 
you know, at least I got a good soundbite from Etho where he said Impulse is a bit of a genius. Is that it what turns the, out. It's from that? I it's thought it from was... that. <laughs> it's from that season because... I thought it was from Among Us. No. Uh, what happened was I had found a way to uh, pinpoint where diamonds were in the world. If you go into a swamp and there's this like diamond shape of clay, you knew at this point in the ground to dig straight down and you would find diamonds. Mm. And so I showed, I showed Etho this trick because we had a nice big swamp. And I was like, Etho, check this out. If you dig right here, straight down, you're going to find diamonds. And he did it. And he's like, what? And I explained it to him. And he's like, and that's when he said Impulse is a bit of a genius, it turns out. So, yeah, we had, we had, you know, and that was my way of getting in, in his good graces. So I finally figured out that I needed to do more than just play Minecraft and just try to be a pro gamer. And what I decided to do was to create a character for myself. And I saw all these alliances being formed. Um, we had one, like, in the back corner by the little village. Uh, it was like me, Tango, and Etho, and then... Uh, you know, you had your dog warts and then we had green and scar together because he owed his life or whatever. Um, and they, they ended up in the desert or something right that season. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, so there was all these like a groups forming. Oh, B-dubs and Cleo had their little yeah. thing, which there was some fun moments. Yeah. There. <laughs> so I decided to pick a character from a show that I really enjoyed, Game of Thrones, uh, Littlefinger, Peter yeah. Baelish. Right. And, you know, if you remember that series, if you've seen it, he kind of like. He's kind of like the snake in the grass, An right? He, yeah, he, he goes around and he like gets information from all these clicks and he's like playing all sides, right? Yeah. So that was that was my idea was I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to uh, play this character that everybody thinks I'm loyal, I'm nice, I'll never backstab him or anything like that. But in the meantime, I'm really just I'm gathering information from this group as they trust me and I'm giving it to this group over here to try to pit them against each other. So that they can battle out, I'll stand back on the sideline, and they all take each other out, and I'm the last man standing. Yeah. Uh, right. So I'm yeah. trying to play like a social engineering type of game as well as as also trying to make sure I was kitted out in diamonds. But that that to me was one of my favorite seasons because I actually had a direction that I kind of gave myself. Yeah. And, and I knew I knew when I did it, I was like, this isn't going to win me the season. This is going to be the death of me. But that's great content. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I knew at some point, like everybody's gonna be like, "You're playing all sides, man," and then come after me. You know, and yeah. I was and I was fine with that. You know, at that point, I'd given up on the, the winning thing. And I realized it's all about the entertainment value. It's Absolutely. about telling stories. It's yes. about improv. And it's about creating creating dynamics with others and yeah. teams, creating trust, creating um, 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 mischief, uh, lack of trust, like yeah. all that you, driving people into a skeptic state, you know, like it's, it's about all that. And yeah. it's, that's what made it so much fun. And I, I found myself, I just was trying to fit in somewhere and I was just trying to, so basically that first season I was kind of trying to, who am I going to hitch my wagon to? Like, that's what it was. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to admit that there I'm working among professionals and I'm, and I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to hitch my wagon to somebody and I'm going to see what I can learn here. And by the end of the series, I, I had actually become a, a different character in a good way. And I started to once, <laughs> I, what one of my funniest moments. Well, first of all, before we do, I have to, I have to do this. I have to talk the, the dynamic between Cleo and B Dubs. <laughs> we can't skip this moment. Can't do it because it's too funny. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and sign myself up for this. Uh, right, right here. I'm going to put where you and I are going to be quiet for a little bit. I'm going to play the uh, clip that we're talking about. Right, right, right here. My fingers pointing. Hopefully, it works out. Uh, I'm gonna watch for it. this. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna watch it. So uh, I'm gonna play it in my head. We'll watch it together, and I'll see if I can get it in the video later, and, and it'll be great. How about, how about you, can, right. you do it over on the outside of the wall? So right, it's I love like that part, we can totally like when she says, <laughs> "How about?" How about? You, <laughs> and you, you play on the outside of the wall. Outside of the wall. No, I love Minnesota. the way I love. It's her accent too. Yeah, one hundred percent. Outside of the wall. Uh, on the outside of the wall. And Feels the best. She said that, and then like you had one of your like super genuine authentic laughs which i just love i love your laugh when it's like that super duper genuine laugh yeah. and 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 i started busting up too and it was like we were just cracking up it was like she wasn't trying to be funny even no. a little bit. It was just she so even, funny. I don't even think she knew we were like around. I know like, we were, we were passing having, through. Yeah, we were, we were just passing through and, and, and we just happened to hear her because um, this series, that's another thing that we should mention. Like this was new, the idea that we could talk to each other in game yes, with, a, with a proximity yes. um, like voice 
So basically, the closer we were to people, like the louder the voices were, and then the further we get away, it kind of fades out, just like it would in, in real life. Right. And in Minecraft, like this was new. This was like a new plugin, you know, mod basically to Minecraft that we implemented in the life series and it was like we were like one of the first people to do it yeah um and now it's like pretty prevalent like uh, all the all the major smps have this built in now um because before that it was like everybody's in discord and you can hear each other whether you're on one side of the world or the other yeah and it didn't make any sense so now all of a sudden you have this actual dynamic and volume and so we had that like as we were walking away outside of the world like it kind of <laughs> yeah. it kind of like fades you know like <laughs> yeah and you and i and their povs our laughter fades out yeah. you know because we are you and i were walking together for some reason and we just happened to pass because you and i didn't have a whole lot of interaction right. in that first season but particularly in that moment we're together and she does that we both just started laughing it was a charm of it because I don't think Leo or B dubs in their own minds in that moment thought they were even making content. They were both very well aware that they were recording, yeah. but they were doing what can be deemed as an extremely mundane task. I'm going to cut all this out. Yeah. So it was just people being people and talking together. And it just made me laugh so hard because it was, just, <laughs> it's the accent it is, but it was also like, like how about, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it was just, it was yeah, great. Just the sarcasm in her yeah. voice was great. I mean, that's another good point is like, the the way that the recording sessions worked i think as a youtuber is like one of the most enjoyable experiences because typically hours upon hours go into planning uh creative mode building whatever you're going to build make sure it looks good and then get on a server and gather the blocks and then yeah. build them and then uh as you're doing it make a recording and cut it up in a way that it makes it enjoyable for the yep. audience the live series is completely different all we would do would get together one day a week for three hours, get on the server together and hit record. And we take a little break in the middle because, mm -hmm. you know, we need bio breaks and stuff at right. some point. Uh, and that was it. And then so we had three hours of footage after the session's over that we have to then dissect and figure out how we're going to cut it up and make that three hours enjoyable. And so many people would just be like, well, why don't you just publish all three hours? I would totally watch that. No. And, and <laughs> it was really hard to explain to people that... Um, no, you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a lot of time where I'm not saying a single word. I'm branch mining or something for for materials or, or whatever, building whatever. And it's a breeding villagers like you don't want to see that. I'm not even saying any words. And then like some other times, like words were said that weren't really appropriate yeah. for video. <laughs> so, you know, like because, you know, like, you know, when you're with somebody, whether or not this clip is going to yeah. make it right. Like yeah. B-dubs and Cleo, then that moment didn't really think that they were they were on camera even right. though we were for the whole three hours you know yeah and that's the and that's the charm of it so i found myself getting really connected to these cats and uh you can see the arc of my character by the end of of the because it was either one of the last episodes or whatever i don't remember it was towards the end and uh scar and green had pizza and pizza was their llama, llama yeah. right and they had a they had a um they had a, a robe over it that was like looked like pizza or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the name of the llama was pizza. It was really cute. And it was their, it was their baby, but they had wronged us in some way, but we couldn't physically attack them. I don't remember. I like, we couldn't technically attack them because of the colors or whatever. Yeah. I don't re really remember the dynamics. What I do remember is in my own mind is saying, okay, I'm getting a lot more comfortable with everybody. I think I can do what I'm about to do. And I said, everybody, and it was me, it was me, Ren, Martin, I think Etho was there. And I said, everybody, pull your bows out. And they all pulled them out. And, and I said, kill pizza. And we just, it, like, it was, a, they were long shots. And we just started lighting up pizza because that wasn't against the rules. But boy, is it going to piss them off. And that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. Now, part of me was just like, so, there's a chance somebody's going to come at me and be like, oh, that was too much. What are you doing? But I was like, I'm going to take that risk because I think this is good content. I said, I said, kill pizza. And Martin goes, <laughs> I wish I could do it proper. Martin's up. Martin goes, <laughs> I'm down. It was like, like he laughed for a <laughs> second. A yeah. Half a laugh agreement. because I'm down. Arrows just start flying and either green or scar types to us. And because we're too far away for proximity at this point, yeah. either green or scar types in chat. They said, you're, you're hitting pizza. And I screamed from the top of my lungs. Who do you think we're aiming for? Homie. You know, not that they could hear yeah. it. We all just started laughing so hard. And then pizza goes down. And, what a uh, monster! Oh, it was killing it was, somebody's <laughs> Minecraft pet. Who would do that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You did not provoke, but we did that. And I and and Scar is so good. So his, his the eyes on his avatar are shifty, right? They're like in the the bottom right corner of his eye or bottom left. I can't remember. 
But I don't know if you've noticed this, and maybe it's in my head, but I don't think it is. He's so good with his avatar, he can stand so that that shiftiness has effect. So what he'll do is if, if, if and he did this a lot um, when just when you play with him in general, is that he doesn't look directly at you. Sometimes he does, but sometimes he'll angle himself so that the eyes work so it looks like he's looking sideways at you, right? It's hmm. very clever. And he did this, like as soon as we did that, if you look through Green's POV, he does this shifty look at him. It's like the side look because he angles his avatar and he goes, I will kill every one of them. <laughs> and it was so daunting. You know what I mean? It was so great. And I just remember being like, that, that moment was great. It was yeah. so good. Like the, all the, like the whole dynamic of it. And I was like, I took a risk there. I'm the new guy and everybody latched on. And so far it's well received. Let's do this. Like I just, and I felt that, I think that, I think that was the moment that without knowing it, everybody was like massively accepting me in that moment. Like in that moment, it felt like I could be wrong here, yeah. but it just felt like that to me. <laughs> awesome. I remember like, that's when I realized that when you get into character, you, you, you are that character. Yeah. Like, like you're not playing a character. Like you, you are that character. Because I remember like when I came in and, and doing my little finger bit, got accepted to dog warts. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm like, backstabbing and setting up traps you were actually like really hurt to find out <laughs> that i wasn't legitimately on your side i remember like like you were yeah. really hurt by it i yeah. was like whoa it's cool it's kind of a I character vouched for, i wasn't yeah. i mean as, as you can imagine there was no it, it never came there was no real world upset at this it wasn't right. like we stopped recording i'm like i can't believe you did that it wasn't like yeah. that it was like oh this is exactly how my character would act yeah. And so I'm upset with you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not. My character is. But I'm but I'm channeling it because I advocated for you. I like I was like, I spent several episodes getting into this group, and then you came in on my word and made yeah. me look like an idiot. Like exactly. that's what that was, right? Yeah, that's the worst. But it was almost like, but that's good content, man. Yep. It's funny, you yeah. know? And and <laughs> and I think what's let's let's I I don't know. I you're gonna hate this. Can should we do it? Can we peel back? Uh, can we show a little bit more than we should? I guess. Can we? I don't know what you're going on about, but sure. well, everything is unscripted. Everything's unscripted. We mm -hmm. know that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're on about right now. Everything's can, can we do something? I'm not going to explain what we're going to yeah. do, but yeah, can we? Everything uh, permission is, granted. Everything sure. is unscripted, um, but we do have our own sometimes internal plans. Like you know, and we said it before. It's like it never pans out the way we want it to. But you were in. You were. Uh, you were. You sold all of us. You know what I mean. And then you you disclosed to me before we started recording the, that you were about to backstab us. And I'm like, dude, uh, it's like okay. And you're like, don't don't like don't tell anybody. You know what I mean? Because I want to get their genuine reaction. Yeah. I I think I told you because we know each other so well that I knew you were going to pick up That's on right. it. That's right. And, and so I kind of needed you to act like we didn't know each other. Right. I, I needed that like leeway with you. I had for, an unfair and, advantage. Yeah. In, in order to pull off what I needed to pull off to right. make good content, I yeah. needed you to, I needed you to just go with just me. Just play along. And the only yeah. way I knew, I knew you would call me out if I didn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And you would have. Oh, uh, like this. Because yeah. it was so funny because I was like, I remember and when you told me that, I was like, I wish you didn't tell me. And you're like, dude, you're going to sniff it out otherwise. And yeah. I was like, yeah, probably. I mean, I guess it's no, I have an unfair advantage. I can do yeah. it. And not to mention, it wasn't like I knew the whole time. It was literally seconds before, you know, whatever. But what's funny is you, we were all headed somewhere. We were all going to go make an attack and you typed wait up, right? Because yeah. we've broken off from you. And I was like, that was the, that was his code word to his guys. Yep. You know what I mean? I was like, I know it was. And he, and I was all, and he was right. He was right. Cause now it feel really bad if I called it, because if you didn't do that, I know for a fact, I know for a fact, if you didn't do that, I would have foiled all yeah. your plans and I probably would have felt bad about it later. But if you didn't do that, the second I saw you right, wait up, I know for a fact, I would have said, guys, wait up, wait up. And as soon as you caught up, I would have said, I've known him for 20 years. He just turned on us, kill him now. Yeah. Like I, that's what I would have said in that yeah. moment. We would have killed you. It would have been this. And they would have been like, why did you have us do that? And I'd be like, you can trust me on this. You know what I mean? But instead I was like, oh, dude, he wants us to wait up. And I was like, whatever. Yeah. And, and I even got a little bit of static, I think, in the, in the comment section. They were like, how has Skiz known him this long and he didn't see this backstab coming? And I'm like, well, I kind of did. Yeah, it is a bit of an unfair <laughs> ask in that way, but like the better content had to had to be acknowledged, right? Which course, which, which yeah. was going to lead to better content. Us like me doing I that call know. and then and I, then and yeah. then getting like that whole interception happening and a big well, fight happening or you turning and killing me and that's it. But as it turns you know? out, and neither one of us could have known this is that had it just been like if it played out the way I just said or whatever, it, I, it may have arguably been better content because you had a trick up your sleeve that none of us knew about yeah. with the 
I was gaming hard, bro. He was fishing. I, I had a, I had this thing like a teleportation device. I'm trying to explain this to people that don't know Minecraft. Um, yeah, <laughs> I had this way to teleport. And my remote control for the teleport device was a fishing rod that I would cast. Yeah, it's a bug so, they fixed. Yeah, it was a yeah. bug in the game that I had discovered. So, like, that season I was, like, really into just finding all these yeah. crazy Minecraft, like, pieces of information that, that weren't well known. And then that was going to be my my other kind of niche was to show off all these cool Minecraft things that, pe you know, on, like, um, you know, Impulse is a bit of a genius. I was going for that, right? And uh, so, yeah, I had I had a way to just instantly teleport away when I was in danger. And it was still active at that point. Yeah. And later, so was it wasn't. It. You tried to use it later, and yeah, it wasn't. I, but at that <laughs> moment, if I said, I've known him for 20 years, he just turned on his kill him, and they we started to, you would have done that and disappeared. And disappeared. that, in my opinion... That could have been nice, yeah. That could have been sick content, yeah. you know, but... But, but then you, you know, you backstab us and it was completely, I mean, like I said, I, I, it wasn't like I knew this for weeks. I knew it for seconds before, you know, and you were just yeah. like, just be cool with it. I know, you know, you know me, you know, you, it could be argued, you know me better than I know you because you knew I would sniff it out. Yeah. Like that says something, you know, <laughs> but, uh, they all were just like, what just happened? You know what I mean? Like, did he just turn on us? And I was like, oh yeah. But, but it was still like, it was. It was such good content, and and when you turned on us, that was good because what it did was it it extra solidified the three of us, right, and, and, and or the four of us because Etho was part of that as mm -hmm. well, and it solidified us. And I remember when I just went completely a wall at the end and and just stormed the tower and came up to the top and <laughs> went after you and greeted. I just got smoked. Yeah, it was just a mess. I got smoked. It was a mess. Well, at least you didn't get backstabbed by somebody who actually trusted it, like. I had, so even though I was playing the... <laughs> you think I don't trust you? You're my homie. <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> you didn't die because I backstabbed you. Oh, yeah. You yeah, charged, yeah. right? Yeah. My end of my oh. series was because I, it was something I didn't see coming, and the actual, like, one person in the entire series that I I, I trusted fully, you know, and, and we had this, like, day one alliance, and, like, even though I was doing my backstabbing with all the alliances, I still had this one alliance that I was actually truthful to or true, yeah. to, true to. And and then, uh, yeah, that didn't go so well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we're acting like, you know, as we talk about these things, if, if we're worried about like people that haven't seen it and then giving spoilers for how it actually ended. It or, came out two I mean, years this is two years ago. Yeah. But um, yeah, B-dubs shocked me at the end. You guys can, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, yeah, to this day, it's been kind of like this, this meme yeah. of, about a clock. <laughs> yeah. It happened to be my clock as well, yeah. which was, which was another like little fun tidbit. So because I was so worried about my life and staying alive and, and making it to the end, I carried a clock on me so that I could always see if it was going to be nighttime out before I left my, my base or wherever. Cause I didn't want to go out at night. I was afraid, <laughs> you know? Oh my God. So, I didn't know so I had a clock on me. So I'd always know I'm not going to walk out my front door and it's going to be dark out and there's a creeper right there and I blow up and lose a life to, to a creeper. And that's, you know, that's it. That's yeah. the end of my series or something. So I had a clock on me. And then at some point in time, like B-dubs killed me and he ended up picking up my clock mm -hmm. uh, or somebody else picked it up and then they gave it to him to betray me. Yeah. So, he was given a present that was actually mine to begin with. <laughs> and then he killed me because of that. And I was like, come on, man. And like, nobody really caught that. Cause it's hard when you're yeah. trying to follow multiple PO POVs and see the exchanges that happen. But yeah. I was like, man, what are the odds? How ironic is that? Well, you saw, you know what else is since we, you did the villager stuff, um, we were pretty OP. We had like sick weapons. Yeah. It led that. to, it led to some pretty <clears throat> rough PVP battles um, because when everyone's geared up that much, like the fights were just taking too long. Like, yeah. And people would have plenty of chances to regenerate and run away or whatever. And so that actually led us to change some, some rules yeah. in future seasons. Like we outlawed villagers, I think the next season, either, didn't we? either the next season or in double life. I'm not really sure, but yeah, we, at some point we're like, that's enough. No, no more villagers. villagers. <laughs> yeah. They're too OP. And then we got to a point where it was like, even if you get an enchanting table, we're only going level one protection. Right. Like yeah, on, we you didn't know want to be max like, enchanted. Yeah. Like you can, and, and your weaponry can only go to level mm -hmm. one. You could go to high levels for like efficiency. Like if you want a nice pick or whatever, but, but it was like when it comes, basically when it comes to being deadly or being able to defend yourself, we need to put everybody on a very similar playing field 
Because if we get to a point where somebody like you hoards some villagers and now they have that monopoly, it's like the I mean, yeah. season's over. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I could have, if I was really, really trying to win, I could have like really done a good job of hiding those villagers and only having them to myself and not trusting anybody, you right, know, right. but like that didn't feel, I thought it would be more fun, uh, you know, to give up that game aspect and and like let people try to come in like find out about it and try to come in and Set use them and get caught and yeah. then i can try to trap it yeah. stuff like that yeah so that, it leads to more fun content 100 yeah, at the end of the day i mean uh, you know that's where i think from a viewer's perspective if you're watching and you're just like thinking this is minecraft like a contest like to the death who's gonna win and then that's all it's about and forget about entertainment value and in, in the content you know if just i'm just in it to see who's going to win the tournament right then we all would have played totally different yeah and it would have been so boring <laughs> it would have been very boring if there was some if yeah. there was some sort of like like significant cash prize to the winner i think that that would have made the content boring oh, yeah. i do because oh, yeah. we were like everybody wanted to win but we were all there for the same exact reason that was to come out the other side with really enjoyable content exactly you know, and and we're all on the same page there. So, all right, let's move on to season two. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, so, we could talk about this for for four days straight. Probably. I know. I know. One day per season. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the first, so the, so first season was three lives, right? So we mm -hmm. got we got red, yellow, green, uh, and then the second season um, was actually called Last Life, where you were randomly assigned lives uh, from two to seven. Is it? I think it went all the way, all up, the way to up to seven. seven. I think. Yeah. And and on top of that, uh, you could also uh, gift lives to people. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Lives became currency. Your lives became currency, and that's why I mean, Tango is. This is why I, I literally I pegged Tango as one of the most clever people I know. He instantly came up with a game called You Bet Your Life, and it was where he he took lives from people. You get that he held on to your lives, and they became the cash prize winner, the, the life the life winner, whoever guessed who was going to go out first or whatever, whoever was right, got all the lives that people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he's brilliant, man. Yeah. So now you're hoping for that random generator to give you those seven lives. And now you could potentially be over 10. You know what I mean? Like that's like he changed the complexion of the season with his game. It was just, it was so good. Yeah. It was so good. Do you man. remember the moment where you're, you're standing there first episode, first day, first session and the the counter is going and it flips through all the numbers yeah you know and it's like you see these random numbers yeah. popping up well i'm watching mine and it made me super nervous because like as it was like spinning around through the numbers it kept like pausing for just an yeah. extra bit of time yeah. on the number two oh. and i was like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be i'm gonna get two lives and <laughs> and be completely out of the series like tomorrow you know and uh I got three, uh, yeah. just three. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what I had last season. Yeah. So whatever, that's probably, you know, okay. And I had to make do with it. But that, I got three as well. Yeah. Yeah. No luck there, man. I know. I wanted, I who wanted got, to get more. Who got seven? Um, uh, that was the season that Mumbo and Lizzie, oh, Lizzie joined Mumbo us. Oh, Mumbo and Lizzie joined that season. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. that was fun. We had some new, some new dynamic there with, with Mumbo and, and Lizzie and, I ended up uh, hanging out with the Brits. Like I remember in the first session, I somehow uh, it was like me, Martin, Jimmy, Green, and Mumbo, mm. and I was the only non-Brit. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that's when the the whole bit about aha yeah. was born. Yeah. And uh, you know, like they have their style of humor, and I'm like trying to play along and catch on. I'm like, I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then Martin, Martin is just so witty that he just like kept coming up with these aha puns or whatever. And then like he's like, "That's it, I can't handle anymore." He was literally hyperventilating because like he got so yeah, he was like laughing at his own jokes and stuff. And like <laughs> it was like it was like giving a, him a headache, and he was like hyperventilating. And, and he's like, "That's it, I can't do this anymore." Oh, he's like trying to catch his breath. He's like, okay, I need it. Does anybody have any food? Because if I don't get food, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> and then he's like, oh my gosh! Like it was just like he's like, I can't help it. Like it was so funny. It just went and went. Oh uh, yeah, he couldn't stop. Like he got that mode. Like he's literally trying to tell himself, stop doing that, yeah. and he couldn't. It was hilarious. Well, we also that is the first season that the boogeyman came in. Yes. And the boogeyman, and I, and this is gonna be a funny story. By the time we get to the, we gotta talk about the boogeyman in season four, but because there's a fun Reddit post out there about something I'll talk about. Boogeyman is uh, what, uh, one or more people are randomly chosen to, if they might be the boogeyman. There might be one boogeyman, there might be two. 
Um, but if you're chosen, then you have to kill somebody of before any Before the end of the before session. Before the end of the so session. So that three-hour time yep. frame, and that's it. If you don't kill somebody before the end of the session. You lose a whole life. Yeah. No. Uh, didn't you go oh. straight to red? Um, you go straight to red. But not not in. Not, no matter what. Are you sh- Oh, you might be right. Yeah. You do. You, you go straight, straight to red. To, so, so you, you could be on. Seven lives, you, you'll lose six lives yeah. like that. Yeah. Yep. Whew. So, so that was. Like, so every time it, it's counting down, you know, for the, who's going to be, I've been nervous every time. Like, I'm just yeah. so nervous and I've never gotten it right. Not once dude. And I was just like so nervous. And then now once it's chosen, you're glad to not be it, but you're kind of yeah. bummed you weren't. And now you're, there's this anxiety of there's this boogeyman out there. And, and well, um, what was it? If you did end up killing somebody during this, during the session, then you got a, a an extra life out of it. I don't you? think so. I think, no, it was, it was just self-preservation. Was just that cured. was it. Just, yeah. You're just cured. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah okay. It's really clever. This is it's really <laughs> clever. And so now that season I partnered up with, uh, with Tango. Right. And then our duo like pretty quickly and ended, ended up into a, a foursome with Etho and B-dubs. So now we were team best, right? We're, we're, we're team, um, B-dubs, Etho, Tango, or B-dubs, Etho, Skiz, and Tango. We're team best. And I remember thinking, man, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this. I, I feel good about the first season. Here we are in the second season what can I do to make a difference here? And I was like, I'm going to give our team a theme and we're going to be the heroes of the server. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be the heroes of the server. And how can I do that? Ooh, I'll compare it to like the A team, which is this old eighties, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so I did all the research. Pity the fool. Yeah. I did all the research on the, on the, <laughs> the note blocks. I know we've talked about this, but I did all the research on the note blocks and which ones you got to do. And so I set them all up. I said, here, I got an idea for us. And I set up all the blocks and I went, bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. And B dubs is all ba 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 da da ba. Like he knew what I was Nailed doing. It. I'm like, dude, I was like, I, you know, this is who we are. We're the, we're the heroes of the server, and they just loved it. And we just latched on to it to the point to where when if there was a wrongdoing, here comes Team Best to right the wrong. And it was just so funny because the first thing we tried to rectify was somebody stole the enchanting table. And we were like, we're going to go get it back. We're going to go steal it back. And we ended up buying it back. And so, <laughs> so we talked about our comic books and B-dubs goes, okay, well, here's the cover of our comic book. It's just a guy with, with a, with a, a checkbook flipped open asking how much. And the second <laughs> he did that, I'm like, oh, the fan art's going to be gorgeous. And yeah. it absolutely was. Somebody made up an entire like cover That's of awesome. a comic and it was exactly what he ex- <laughs> That was one of the best things about the, su- the life series is, is all the fan art that oh, comes yeah. out. It, it, as Scar talked about when he was on uh, the podcast, like that's how you can gauge as a creator, like how how well your content's hitting an audience yeah. is how much fan art's generated. And I haven't seen as much fan art generated from anything else than the Life series. Yeah, this this yeah. this series, the Life series, hits a chord with the audience, and and quite frankly, you know, Green's vision. It's it's a lot of fun watching Green's vision come to fruition in fantastic ways that I have to imagine he didn't even see coming. No, I think he thought it was he was be, so nervous that it was yeah. going to flop that he was afraid to not call it an experiment, like even season two. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like he still wanted to call it. This is still experimental, uh, yeah. even though season one was so well received, it was a massive hit. Yeah, it was a massive hit, and and this one was like, like they. It, it feels to me like they keep getting better, but. And the fact that it's not the same, every season's a little bit different, right? Like we, yeah. we, I remember like, so in, in with team, God, I'm talking way too much, but in team best, that one, I remember I was like, oh, I, I'm not trying to, but my, my like leadership stuff is starting to come out here and I want to be that team. That's just visibly impressive to everybody. So that's why I created that. You know, I want us to be able to make a TNT launcher within seconds, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. And that's when they got to see a side of me. They were like, well, who is this guy? Because I was like, that wasn't fast enough. Do it again. And we were doing it again and again. Martin was spying on us. And when he saw it, he was like, guys, I was watching. That is awesome. And we went to show Green. And Martin's like, Green, you're going to want to see this. And we're like, and go. And the whole thing went, and we fired and tore it down. And Green's all, as we were building it, I remember, I remember Green's all, what? wow because it's four four of us just looking like chaos but a but a, a tnt launcher is being born in front of you in seconds it's lit and we fired it and we tore it down and left and green's all oh, oh, wow like when he did that he's like that's cool like it was a really neat yeah. thing we're coming back and i said i said why did that why did that tnt go straight up and it was like a thing, and I like the work me was coming out. Yeah. <laughs> P-Dubs is all, sorry, boss, we're learning. <laughs> and then he mocked me. He's all, why did that go straight up? It was so funny, dude. I couldn't help it, though. It just came out of me, man. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that was a that was a fun season too. That season felt like such a blur to me. I don't know why. Like it just that season felt like it went by so fast. Yeah, it did. Just thinking back on it, I'm like trying to remember stuff that happened in every episode and I <laughs> I just remember hanging out with those those other four people. Yeah. Like, I don't remember doing anything else. <laughs> I know that, like, you know, at the end, me and Green, we released a wither because, you know, chaos is fun yeah. on, on that kind of series. Oh, yeah. It didn't do half the damage we were hoping for, though. Yeah. I ended up losing my life and the, the series over because of it, you yeah. know, because I, <laughs> I got so busy watching the wither. And do it and like watching everyone else try to kill the wither that I didn't watch my own back and I didn't think for a second somebody would shoot at me instead of the wither. <laughs> guess who? Guess who killed me? Who it was, was it? Scott. It was Major. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> and dude, like after the first arrow hit, I was like, "Whoa! Why is somebody shooting at me? Like, what? I'm not even fighting anybody. I don't understand. Why am I being targeted?" And by the time I had turned to run away, second shot back of the head. Yeah. And I was done. I was like, "Oh, that is oh, not." So, so that was that was not a, a fun way to go out that season. I was kind of bummed about yeah. how that one ended. But did you take? Did you end anybody's season? Because I, in the first season, I, I ended Jimmy's. It was a big battle in the desert, and I shot him through a window. So the first ever out because Jimmy was. Out first and all in every season, four seasons yeah. And the insane. first ever out was so you committed were the first by me, one. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were the no, you weren't the first death ever. No, I was you the first one because of Scar. I was the I was first one say, to take funny. somebody out, and it felt so good and bad. I shot him through a window and I killed him. And, and when it killed him, I was like, Yeah, baby, I was just so pumped. And then somebody's like, Oh, he's out, out, and I'm all, oh, That was Jimmy. Okay, I'm okay with it. You know what yeah. I mean? But I felt, I felt kind of. Then I, I took Cleo season. out like oh, minutes geez. later. <laughs> Started getting the blood loss. I know, man. <laughs> it was too much fun. I just okay. So second season's kind of a blur. Yeah, I remember I died. Ren shot me in the back when I was. Fleeing. Ren, your former king. Yeah. Yeah. See, none of the alliances or anything mean anything season to season. I mean, I like to bring up the clock thing every season with B dubs yeah. just because it's kind of fun. It's but funny. like, we didn't really hold any. I mean, heck, the next season, B dubs and I were married. <laughs> oh, oh, double life. Double okay. Life. Now, this is this this is the impulse show because I didn't get to be a part of this one. I was, I was oh, traveling. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, tell the story about how, what happened there. So you you couldn't join us for double life. I couldn't. I could. I, oh, that was hard. This was hard. And this was this is also when I got to see a side of Green um, that I was that was really delightful because it was like again, I have the least amount of influence on everybody, but Green was just bending over backwards trying to find a way uh, for me to make these recording sessions and it just so happened just the way it played out. I was going to be missing two consecutive recording sessions. We've gotten clever in the past. Everybody knows we had Lizzie come fill in for gem. We, uh, or, or come fill in for Pearl and gem filled in for um, Cleo. Cleo. Yeah. Uh, we had to do that one day. These things happen, right? These things happen. We've shifted, Green, ar we've shifted around recording days. We've to shifted try to around, like meet yeah, people's schedules. That's and right. Stuff. But this was a thing where it was like, I'm going to be asking this entire lot to, to make huge, huge reservations two like two recording sessions in a row for me. Like I appreciate, I was like, Green, I really, really appreciate what you're doing. I really do. But you got to cut me loose. I, I, I hope that you do this again. And I hope to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, if we ever do this again, you're going to be part of it. I don't know what else I can do. Like he was very, very, very helpful. And it, 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 it hurt to miss. And yeah. to this day, I still, to this day, I've not, I, I tried watching that FOMO was just, it consumed me. So you haven't really seen nope. much of, of nope. double life. So, all right, so you know every season, you know Green Mastermind wants to come up with a, a twist. Yeah, and in Double Life, the twist was you had a partner, and you were you were bound by your health. So we get ten hearts in Minecraft. Those ten hearts were were basically uh, in sync with your partner. It's how we do naked and scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except we only had ten hearts and not twenty. Right, right, yeah. But uh, and they do regenerate, but. Yeah, so okay. on day one, we didn't know who our partner was. So the first task that we had to do was see if we could seek out your partner. And really, it's the only way you could tell is if you're standing next to somebody and they get like hurt and you also get hurt in that exact instant. So uh, that's how you, you're like, wait, are we bound? Because you just got shot with an arrow and I lost two hearts or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> the first session, that's what it was. It was just a bunch of people like running around the map and getting to know the map. And then like it was it was funny because I watched back some of my footage and, and I'm I'm hanging out. Me and B dubs were up at this pillager outpost thing and there there's arrows flying. 
and I'm like picking up stuff and I'm getting hurt and I'm just <laughs> assuming that I'm getting shot. But if I pay closer attention, I had no arrows in me. Yeah. Like I, I'm getting hurt and I wasn't actually getting shot at all. And I look over and B-dubs is a pin cushion. <laughs> And, and my brain didn't put it together that like we were linked. And so like, it took like another five minutes or so of us hanging out. And then like, he, like one of us like took some stupid damage and I was like, and, and he's like, Oh, what was right? And I was like, wait, you got hurt. I got hurt. And I was like, Oh yeah, we're together. That's so cool. Yeah. Man. So at the end of like session one, I think everybody had pretty much figured out who their, who their person was. And then, you know, everything was together. So like, if I died once, he died once. So I think we were back to just the three, just the three lives mm -hmm. as well, if I remember right. Um, but now it was it wasn't just that because either one of us died and that was one of our three lives. So it was like really easy yeah. to to lose lives now because it's double double cost basically. So <laughs> it was funny because I didn't know what to do once once we partnered up. I didn't I didn't have a strategy for the season. I, you know, I nothing. I had no no ideas. And so my first like after B dubs and I started hanging out, you know, we built a little base and we had no idea where we were, were even the in the map. Otherwise, we would have picked a better location. But we decided to be home wreckers. <laughs> I think B dubs came up with this concept. <laughs> so his idea was, I mean, some, somewhat similar to when I was, you know, playing the little finger roll, but we wanted to be home wreckers, like, because there's all these pairs. We wanted to pit the pairs against each other. Oh, nice. So, like, um, <clears throat> Pearl and Scott were a pair. So, as we, as they got split up and we're talking to Pearl, it would be like, you know, saying little things here and there, like, well, that's not what Scott said about you, you know. Oh, it yeah. just like it just, it just. What did Scott say about me? <laughs> oh well, he said you're kind of a pushover or whatever. Like oh. it, you know, what I mean, like stuff like that, you know, like just planting these little seeds of doubt so that they could like they they wouldn't like fully trust each other. Where meanwhile, B Dubs and I, our plan was to like be a solid couple. Like yeah. nobody's ever gonna split us up. We are always gonna have each other's back, and then that way maybe we could be victorious in the end. But <laughs> that's awesome. It was it was it was fun. Yeah, that was a fun one. It was a very short one though. Because, like I said, the deaths just it made the season short. Like that's not something that we really saw coming. Was like, if I if I go on a trip and I die, that's that means B Dubs is also one death closer to. So, how many out. episodes did you get out of that one? I think I got six. Okay. I think and and I think that was the finale. I think I did make it to the finale on that one. That was the finale. Yeah. So, so everybody be... just had six. Wow! Wow! Yeah. There you go. So it was it was the shortest season yet, and, yeah. and I think because of that, it, it didn't really get a lot of love. Uh, as part of the whole, you know, life series, uh, I think a lot of people view that one as, uh, you know, if they were going to rank them, which they like to do on Reddit, right. um, they would rank that one the lowest most of the time. Mm. It's just because it was it was short, but it was fun. I mean, me and B does, we had a lot of fun. There was a, a pool party, the red pool party is kind of like the red wedding, you yeah. know, where like there was just death and destruction. And yeah, that's awesome, man. See, and I think that was another that was another reason um, I remember being like, this is really bad timing for me not to be able to, to miss a recording, let alone two, um, because the, you're tied to somebody. Yeah, like, it's a big deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to basically like if you and I were tied together, I just feel like, yeah, I guess you're on your own. Like that, that's right. that doesn't. And if somebody were to fill in for me, that's OK. But fill in for me twice. No, it doesn't make any sense anymore. You know, so it was the right decision. It was just hard. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. We definitely missed you uh, on that one. Yeah, I've talked sure. that to death, but I bet it's over. And, and then, and then, and then season four comes along, which is limited life. And this one was this, they're all clever. Yeah. This one was just like, you're, you're dying the second they say go. Cause that clock is just, yeah. this is the one we just finished. Yep. And they, and season three, double life, there was no boogeyman. But season four, right. they brought Boogeyman. They brought back Boogeyman in. back. Cause yeah. Boogeyman was a hit. Boogeyman's a yeah. hit. And that was the lore on Reddit is that, um, since I went out and like a, significant blaze of glory in season one when i just just stormed the castle and i and i just went after you i went after green and we got in a 2v1 and you guys overcame me and there was like this really hectic moment the reddit post out there is tied to that's when the boogeyman was born was through that bloodlust and the reason it came from me uh is is, is from that bloodlust but the reason i never was boogeyman was because it's like two um, the same matter occupying the same space type thing. It can't be me. I'm the one who gave birth to it, right? So it's mm. like this this external force. <laughs> and then season three, there's no boogeyman. There's also no skiz. Yeah. Season four, boogeyman's back. So is skiz. So and skiz. that's where the Reddit post came from. And I'm like, you know what? This is what you're Pretty talking clever. about. 
We could, it's super clever. It's like that. That's not even like not one person has said anything about that. But the Reddit post, no. it got me thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, that's really clever. Did I really give birth to a boogeyman? <laughs> God, I felt some pain, but yeah. But you know, Lemon of Life comes along, and once again, it's a brand new one. Now, the premise of this one was you're counting down. You in there's a literally a 24 hour clock on yep. our screen the entire time that's ticking away in the bottom right. And I remember corner. like the first session, I couldn't stop watching it. It's so nervous. Like the whole first session, I was just like so full of anxiety just yeah. watching the clock tick, and I was like, I felt like. Every second I had to be doing something productive or else I was wasting my time. I guess, yeah. you know, it was like a metaphor for life, you know, and I was like, and it, it took me a while to, to finally just relax and just kind of let it let forget that's there and, and yeah. let it be. But it was it was a really cool concept. <laughs> and day one, oh man, you were off to one heck of a start. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we've talked about this, but it's too good not to talk about even more the the art that's out there. By the way, have you seen somebody... Uh, stop motioned every death of season four with Legos. with Lego. Yeah, so good, uh, so good. It's so how how are they doing? They like, start working on that this first episode. Oh and my so, goodness! So then the, when the last episode comes out, that's all they have to work on is just the last episode because they had it out within a week. Yeah, it was so of fast. the last episodes, oh. which is insane, and that's got to be so much work. Oh, but it was gosh. so cool. It's so it was so clever, and that I love watching all the like the um, when people animate certain pieces oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And I would say of all the animations out there, there's a lot of great ones, man. And one of my favorite ones is uh, where um, Jimmy and and Joel are s- trying to sneak up on us, and they're like, they're over there. And they, you can hear them whispering. The, an- the animation for this is so good, and they're trying to sneak up on me. Um, I think Etho and you, or me, Etho and Tango. I don't remember. And they're like, it's over there. And, and, and the camera shows them behind a wall peeking, and then it cuts to us, and it comes back to them. And then you hear B-dubs go, what are we sneaking on, guys? And the camera pulls back, and he's right behind them. You know, they're like, where did you come from? And then one of them goes, I think they spotted us because they're staring right at us. And the camera pulls back more, and all three of us are with them, just like staring at us. It's like the best <laughs> animation ever. People out there are so clever, yeah. man. And they put this work into in these, these animations, and they – they take a moment that was already pretty good and they make it so much better. Yeah. So much better. But I enjoyed being in a group uh, with you and Tango and Etho. I really yeah. liked our dynamic. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, it was an easy, easy group to be part of, right? Because, yeah. like, we're all, like, really, really good friends and we, we have enough, like, off-camera time with each other that we're, we're familiar with each other enough to be comfortable, Yeah, you know? And so, yeah, that was a good group. Obviously, me, you, and Tango. You know, we've had Tango on the podcast as well. And then Etho, like we spent a lot of time with Etho, you know, playing Among Us. We used yeah. to play Among Us all the time. And so, you know, you get you get really familiar with somebody when you play enough Among Us. He's with such them. a delight. He's <laughs> such a delight. And, and I think if there's ever another life series, I'll tell you this. I, I think I'm going to I'm enjoying the Skiz arc. I came in. I was a little bit apprehensive by the end of that first season. I felt more confident with the crew. Season two comes along. I feel very confident on forming this group of four and driving what our team narrative is. Season four comes along that when I can finally play again with season three for me comes along. And I felt like we got in this group and I just like uh, the leadership stuff was like, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing this. And, and it was like this thing where even I was like, dude, you're, you're kind of annoying. You're really pushy here. And I remember I had our secret space. And if you watch, I think it's Tango's POV. He's coming with uh, <clears throat> Etho and 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 B Dubs, and I'd already given them a bunch of static for the last time Etho came with Cleo, right? And I made a lot yeah. of fun out of it or whatever. But uh, he's like, I got to bring B Dubs because I'm babysitting. And Tango's all, Ooh, Skiz not gonna like that. <laughs> as soon as I heard Tango say that, I'm like, Okay, I think my, my character might be a little bit too pushy now. But he comes up, and I'm like, Have we learned nothing? And, like it was such a dad thing to say. Yeah. Have we learned nothing? And he's like, I got to babysit skis. I'm sorry. The fan art that came out of that was amazing. Like yeah. all these great moments. And by the end, I have, as you can imagine, zero regrets. I loved the entire play. I loved the entire, the arc, everything. And I've been asking myself, if we ever have the good fortune of doing another life series, I don't want to overthink about what's my angle going to be. And I'm like, I think I'm going to dial it back a little bit in regards to mm. In, in regards to trying to drive a bunch of other people, I might be wrong here. I, maybe it'll just fit in that way again. Who knows, right? But yeah. I really enjoyed the fact that, in my opinion, dude, this, t- like, our team, the the Ties, was the most deadly team. It just really was. We had our stuff super together. Now, we were getting not as many kills, 
But what were people doing? <laughs> using our stuff to get all those kills. That's Skynet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Skynet was was great. <laughs> it was and at the so same time, good. it was like, man, it, it was it was always so weird to like never feel safe. Like you're on the ground yes. and you're. I remember like getting whiplash because yeah. I was constantly just looking up, yeah. right? And yeah. and like I. I I guess I had like I don't know the the best computer or the best client settings or something because the I was render. the one that everybody was like you know hey impulse Skynet 2.0 because the our Skynet wasn't good enough right. that they had to go make a taller one. <laughs> uh, is there anyone up there? And I'm like the only one that can see yeah. all the way to the top of the world. I'm like oh yeah, Green's right above us. You might want to move. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but if he drops TNT, we got about seven minutes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, 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 it's gonna take a while before it falls. <laughs> Yeah, but, I could see up there. I think my render distance was the same as yours because I could see it too. And I remember when I first started to see it, I'm like, "What's what are they doing?" Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Come on, why you got to one up us, man? Like, <laughs> like we had figured out the the perfect height to drop actual like regular TNT. Of course, we then later learned that like TNT minecarts are way better because they just explode on impact. Yeah, but uh, it, we were trying to drop regular TNT and hit the the surface, and so we had like a perfect height for that drop and then also for them not to be able to shoot arrows up at us and actually yes. reach us like that was tango's like, tango science. did some like science yeah some yes. testing to make sure he that told me built. what level to go to yeah. like, because the arrows won't reach us i'm like uh follow your lead man and yeah. so we oh he calculated great. the height for like the spawn area because i you tried to tnt scott and oh, martin and it weird. fell short <laughs> so like like i think I, yeah if their island was like five blocks higher i think it would have killed yeah them. it was before they had a roof on there yeah that's why they put the roof on there probably. yeah yeah that moment is why they put a roof on yeah. there that's right that was that was a fun fun series it, you know it's peel back the curtain a little bit like like tango took initiative to build the tower yes and he did a fantastic and, job and the whole time he's building it you know he's just like i'm getting no content today yeah because he's spending we get three hours you yeah. know actually we even shortened the sessions this 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 yeah season. because because um because people were dying so much yeah. yeah so we had to cut back from three hours to like just over two right and uh so tango has only got a few hours to build this tower he's got this vision i gotta build this tower for team ties and i'm gonna put a big tie on the front <laughs> And the whole time he's building, you know, off camera stuff, he's just like, gosh, I'm not getting any decent content today. I need to go do something. I got to kill somebody or something. Like, <laughs> give me Boogeyman. Give me something. You yeah. know, <laughs> he's like just placing blocks. And I'm like, I know, man. Like, this is why not, not this is why the life series, there's never like incredible builds because we don't have time yeah. to like do mega bases or anything. You yeah. Know? We like, don't, we don't focus on cosmetics. Some people do. And it's actually pretty impressive. But he, but my, <laughs> He's going through all this work, building this tower for us, put a beautiful tie on the front yeah. of it. He did such a great job. And then all of a sudden he's all, I think it's, I think it's off center. I think it's crooked. It was and, he, and you and I start snickering. He goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Ah! And he realizes yeah. it. And after he built the whole thing and you and I, we well, dug into him. Our sympathy were all here. So stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so he was <laughs> freaking out because he built it off by one block. And instead of like, it's okay, dude. It looks good. No one's going to notice. You and I are just rubbing it in his yeah. face. You're such an idiot. I did not figure that out. Well, that was right there. That was a testament in my eyes. That was a testament to how good of a friend I actually consider Tango to be. Yeah. Because there's plenty of people who, first of all, I consider everybody on that series a, a friend. But there are some of them where the friendship has not like uh, matured enough to where I wouldn't feel comfortable digging into them on a, on a clearly sensitive moment. Right. right? But it's Tango. He's my brother. You know what I mean? So I'm mm. going to just dig into him. And I just let, and what's great is Scar came in, set a trap. Naturally, I'm the one who set it off. It's sort of a giant explosion. <laughs> and Tango's all, my crooked building. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase, I'm going to restate that just and really enunciate it because I can't tell you how many people thought he said a bad word right there. No. Oh, did they? Yeah. No, yeah. He said Tango my said building. my crooked yeah. building. It was crooked off by a block. And people thought he said my the F word. My F and building. My F and did building. They? I yeah, didn't know because that. just I, I don't know if it was the way that the that <laughs> my sound funnier. picked it up or whatever. Because it was like because it was yelling. Um I saw somebody comments like, oh my gosh, timestamp, tango cusses. And I'm like, yeah, no, no he, he said didn't. crooked. Crooked. So funny. But yeah. the fact that like like the smoke from the explosion hadn't even cleared that he screams my crooked building. <laughs> yeah. Such a funny. Yeah. He's so good. He's so funny when, when he's not even trying. I oh, swear. he's super funny. And so I put together a um 
I put together a highlight reel of the entire season, and I don't yeah, know I if you did. I you watch it. it? Yeah, it's really good. Oh, dude, I've watched. I like. I put it together, literally being like, "Is this going to be any good?" Like, I don't know. And I just did it. And when I was done, I'm all, I like it. I like what this is. I'm going to release it, and it was very well received, and I really enjoyed it. So then I thought, you know what? I might go back and do one for all the the other two seasons. Oh. And I started to, and I'm like, this is really boring. Like I'm uh-huh. so bad. I know, but I think I just gotta get over that and just yeah. like do it anyways and try to find a way to make it exciting. But it's really funny because at like I die instantly to Smager, who's the boogeyman. I die instantly to B Dubs, who's the boogeyman. <laughs> and it was just like death. In the same death. session, because yeah. because like <sighs> When we when we do the boogeyman, there's kind of this understanding to like let it marinate, let yeah. it build, yeah, we let never there be say sus- it out loud, let there be some suspense. Yeah, Scott was like, "Forget it, I'm going to kill. I don't care that we've all been on the server for all of five minutes. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get this over yeah. with." And then we're all looking at each other like, "Well, <laughs> so there's nothing for the rest of the session to be suspenseful about. <laughs> roll again, <laughs> and then we roll again." <laughs> and B-Dub instantly kills you <laughs> instantly. Again. And we're like, uh, so again, there's <laughs> no suspense. And Skiz is now down twice. Four like, hours. Yeah. Because if you die to a boogeyman, you lose two hours. Yeah, I lost. That's rough. I lost over an entire recording session within the first 12 minutes of the season. Yeah. Like it was brutal, dude. <laughs> and I, I was like, I just lost so much. I time. felt so bad too. Cause you had missed the last season and I'm like, okay, Within the first couple minutes of this session, you've already like lost an entire session worth of recording. Yeah, yeah. So you you were out last season completely, and now you're like down a full session worth of time. Like this is this it sucks was, to be skiz. It was crazy because when Smager killed me, first of all, I was standing in water, so I could trying to defend the cow. Yeah. I had no weapons, I had no armor, I had no shield. He had armor, axe, shield. I'm in the water, he has got the high ground, he hit me twice, I was dead. Yeah. The thing is, I wasn't for a second considering a boogie kill to the point to where if I knew he was the boogeyman, I wouldn't have been afraid because yeah. we never say we never say, hey, if you're the boogeyman, wait, nobody says. But like you said, it's like this understanding. Uh, but it, but to me, once he did it, I was it was uh, my brain's like, dude, you get upset gold. if you want. That was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. when the, and then B-dubs. Oh, to my do it, gosh. Like, and then then it was like. Okay, that's content. Yeah, like that's that's, that's good. And, that's good TV. <clears throat> right. And I was fr- like, when B Dubs killed me, there was a part of me that was like, dude, I've lost four hours. But then what's really going on in my head was I was like, I, I was like, that that is going to make my channel blow up because that everybody's going to see this and be like, what? He got killed twice. I gotta yeah. go check that yeah, out. I gotta see it. Just it, like we were talking about earlier. Exactly. Yeah. And if you watch, um, if you watch uh, uh, Joel's POV when I die a second time, he has the best one. He has the text get big because you know i basically just died this major mm-hmm. they roll a boogeyman and then boom i'm dead seconds later and and uh and joel's all oh for goodness sake <laughs> so, <laughs> and he was there with smager and they're both just start wetting themselves they're laughing oh so hard <laughs> oh man it was great man yeah oh sad sad that it's over but you know all good things come to an end and uh hopefully we just are on a little hiatus before the next one starts yeah. you know um it's just a matter of an idea yeah. We always got to like, we, we just kind of like, you know, we, as a group, we still have our group discord. And if anybody has any ideas, we kind of throw them out there and, and things get molded and it just takes time. I think, I think this series, uh, green went on a hike in Germany or something with like Vietnam. big B Vietnam. Now I think they came up with this on a different trip. Uh, cause oh, he was, he was oh. with, uh, he was with big B and, and Jimmy, I think. Oh, gotcha. And so like they, they were going on a hike and then like during the hike, they had this, this epiphany for this idea oh. from what I understand. I could be wrong. Um, but like, yeah, just these ideas kind of strike green or, or any one of us. And then it, and it comes to the group and it's like, yep, that's going to be a good life season, yeah. uh, kind of twist. And it, you know, we like to have the twists every season. So it feels a little bit different. So. And then I've seen a lot of good posts on Reddit too. Like they, they're starting to catch on. Like, oh, this could be a good twist. Yeah, this could be a good twist. They're catching on that every yeah. season's going to be a little bit different. So how can yeah. we keep it fresh? And it's funny because in the beginning of this last season, uh, like I, I get killed, then I get killed, and then, and then I died. To a, you and I died to a creeper. That sucked. That that was what <laughs> that was, was embarrassing. I, I hate dying to like something regular stupid, Minecraft like mobs. Yeah. in a series like this, yeah, dude. I if you haven't yet, make sure you watch Tango's POV of that. It's so funny. I think, it's, I think it, I did. Oh my gosh! But you and I died to that. And the way I edited it in my highlight one is, I'm like, I've died twice. Boom! I die a third time, and it cuts right to B Dubs going, pull it together. Like it's just <laughs> this good flow. So good. But we had like there was so much, and I remember Green saying. This mechanic doesn't work. 
Like people are too, are too loose with their lives. And I remember thinking they are too loose. Like when they need to budget their time better, but it, it works. Yeah. This is good. It's yeah. going to be good. You know, it was and a good it, length it, season, I think. And yeah. there was like constant deaths, which was actually kind of fun and fun, funny. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So it led to, it led to some good content. Yeah. Lives didn't feel as valuable. Like right. dying didn't feel as, but not as valuable, valuable but very valuable all the same. Yeah. Nobody experienced a death that they didn't feel. You yeah. know what I mean? Every time you died, you lose an hour. You're like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was very mad at some of the deaths that I, <laughs> that I took on. Yeah. For they, sure. Dude, Green, now the only person with a quad kill. Yeah. That was sick. Still have PTSD over that one. Like, uh. <laughs> that came out of nowhere, man. Like, we weren't expecting it. So. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, so much fun to reminisce about this series. Yeah. And obviously, if anybody's like listening or watching and you haven't tuned into the life series, you are missing out. Four yeah. seasons worth. Go check it out. And uh, you will get addicted. I, I promise. Oh, it's, it's, it's so like, good. It's, it's, Theater, it's my it's Minecraft theater like you've never seen before. Yeah. So I, we didn't do this podcast just to plug the series, but like. No, it, no, not it, at all. We did it honestly. To me, the reason I think this is fitting is because we just got wrapped up with Scar. Yeah. And we talked briefly about the life series, and we're like, let's just you know, we didn't really dive into it. So yeah. if there is, this is my pitch. If there's ever another life series, and I say. As soon as the final episode of that series comes out, let's do a podcast. Let's on do that one because, season review podcast. Yeah, yeah that'd we be could cool. have talked about one, we one could season. Have really entire, dug into yeah. just even even just limited life. Yeah, and it'd been fresh in our minds yep. too. So, um, yeah, <sighs> I'm down. That's yeah. what we're doing next time. Next I can't time. wait. I can't wait. I know. I'm coming up with another character next time. I want to play. I want to play a character. That was my favorite season. Okay. Was when I played Littlefinger. So <laughs> I'm gonna do something. I don't know if I'm gonna be you know 5 a.m. Pearl you know, crazy or not, but, uh, yeah. you know, I'll come up with something. I'm sure that's my goal. Okay. All right. This is, uh, it's always fun doing this, man. So yeah. Yeah. memory lane is always very, very special. Yeah. So. These are easy ones to record too, for sure. I know. Cause there's just so much fun. Anyway, okay. hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Hopefully our center camera is still on. I didn't hear it go off this time. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you're still working. If not, goodbye. Bye. Awkward. Bye. <laughs>